Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today we are going to cover tendonitis. In this video, we are going to go over patella tendonitis, wrist, forearm, and elbow tendonitis, and shoulder tendonitis as well. So we're gonna give you great exercises that you can do because resting isn't always the answer. Most people pick up tendonitis because they don't move their joints like joints. They only do the things that they like to do and your body doesn't like that very much. You need to think of your body as a machine that needs to work really well first and then you can actually do the things you enjoy. Think of it like a subscription to your favorite TV or streaming service. You get a free trial for a while, which is basically the training that you like to do and all the things that you enjoy. And then after a while, that free trial runs out and if you don't pay the subscription, you get stuck. Which is really loud and annoying and incoherent and you can't think about anything else. If you don't pay the subscription, this is what you're gonna keep running into and until you actually sort that out, which is going to be the exercises that we're going to give you, you're going to keep running into problems and rest will not fix that. You need to address your overall training. Tendonitis is inflammation and it doesn't necessarily mean that there's any damage, it just means that there's an irritation that's happening and you'll commonly find that it is from overuse of certain patterns. So for an example, if you work at a desk and you sit at a keyboard, you'll be sitting with your wrists in extension this way. So your wrists are always gonna be like this and then say you go to the gym afterwards, you're doing push-ups, your wrists are like this. And if you're never doing this with your joint, which is flexion, then you're going to be tightening up one side, lengthening lengthening the other side and that's how you can really irritate the wrist or the elbow so that is just one example of how and why you need to think about joints as a whole all of the exercises we're about to show you you will be able to try right now and I would highly recommend that even after your spell of tendonitis was to go away that you keep all of these exercises on board with your training and make sure that you get really really good at them for the wrists, forearms and elbows, the very first thing we want to look at is your overall wrist movement. So the very first thing you want to do is get down on all fours and see if it's comfortable to put weight on your hands in this position here. If that feels okay, then you can do a few different directions. You can turn your hands up, down, left, right, point them up, down, left, right and at each other and just move them around and see if any positions feel painful to you at all and just put a little bit of pressure through. The next thing to try is to see if you have that balance. Do you have the ability to be able to put pressure on your wrist whenever it's in flexion? If this is incredibly painful, then that is one of the things that you really want to work on. And don't just sort of think it's just because of the tendonitis. If you've only got, say, one arm, try the other side wrist. And if you find that you're not even able, so if you try to put your hands down like this and you're not even able to straighten your arm at all, so you have to keep your elbow bent and you find it way, way, way too painful, this is something that you want to work on progressively over time. I'm just talking a couple of minutes every day. So a few ways you can work on that gently would even just be, if you're not even ready to put it on the floor yet, just sit yourself up and just put a little bit of pressure with your own hand like this on that side. And you can even start to try and straighten the arm like that, just until you feel that nice stretch down this side of the arm. So the way you want to build this up over time is make sure that that feels comfortable first, then gradually put that little bit of weight on, sit your weight back into your hips to decrease the amount of load you have, and then over time you can start to bring your body up and over so that you're actually able to bear a lot more weight in through the hands in this position. Other little nice tricks you can do as well is just wiggle the fingers whenever it's in that um, flex position like that there, and you'll really start to feel the muscles in the forearm working, and then whenever you finish stretching your wrists, it's always a good idea to do some really big wrist circles like this and even just pick a few different positions to have your hands in and just wiggle the fingers as well or you can interlock them and you can make big circles like this as well so move your wrists as much as you can there's a lot of stuff that they can do and if you start to give it a little bit every day you're going to find that you don't run into problems as often the next thing we're going to cover is shoulder tendonitis. So what I was explaining earlier is that a lot of this stuff can come from not moving your joints enough in the right way. So what we want to look at is rotation. So Jenny has a really light resistance band here. And what she's going to do is pull it apart until she gets a little bit of tension on it. And she's then going to bring it up and around and then down and around to her back. She's then gonna roll her arms around to the front, have her knuckles beside each other, and then squeeze in from her pecs at the top here. So she, you should be aware of the muscles here. Then she's gonna bring the band back around, 
up and around a big circle, keeping the elbows completely straight and bring it back down. And then actually pull the band around herself and try and keep her shoulders down in a good position. And then she should feel her lats in this position. So in and around the back here. And then you're gonna to start to do that for reps. I much prefer people to use a really light resistance and go for higher reps with this. And if you find that you fatigue really quickly with it, then you really need to work on it, okay? So this is going to help to basically floss out everything in your shoulders. This makes your neck feel better. It makes your shoulders feel better. It also starts to help with the elbows as well. And you start to get good muscle activation going on here. So joints want to be challenged in multi directions. And this is a great way to hit a ton of stuff. The trick is actually doing it for big reps. So big sets of 20 or Jenny would be quite advanced in what she does training wise. So for Jenny, I would even say, hey, let's go for a set of 50. So that you really start to feel it's quite a unique um, sort of like a nice burning sensation in the shoulders. It just feels like everything's being packed up. So it's a really, really good thing to do. And if you find you're able to tolerate this, even if your tendonitis is quite flared up, this may be something that you will find that will decrease your pain symptoms very, very quickly. So don't wait to go to the physiotherapist to get exercises like this. This is stuff that should be standard in your training anyway. I think everyone should learn how to use a resistance band properly in order to get really good benefits um, just for their joints in general, but also how you feel in day to day too. So if you ever find you're always getting a stiff neck. This is another great drill for that. So this is the banded dislocate. Now we're going to give you a great drill that can help plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, patella tendonitis, and even back in the hip pain. What we're gonna to start to work on is your balance. So very first thing that we want you to check is to see can you stand on one leg with your knee raised up to about 90 degrees for one full minute at a time. And can you do this on both legs? So if you're finding, especially on the affected side, so say Jenny had any of those tendonitis issues on her left side, she was really struggling with her balance, she kept having to put the foot down, that could be a big cause of it. So these are fundamental skills that you want to have. So it doesn't make any sense to start going and doing marathon and training, if you can't balance on one leg, your muscles are gonna get tired too quickly and that's when you're gonna start rattling bones around, okay? So you wanna make sure that your muscles are strong enough to cope for extended periods of balance. If you're not struggling with this, however, so um, with regards to Jenny, so she would be quite strong, she's active, she does training, if she was to pick up, say, a spout of patella tendonitis, we need to challenge her balance even more. We need to make it harder, okay? So the very first thing you start to do before we even get to the plate is going to be, can we move the limbs around but keeping balance. So she's gonna deliberately start to take her hip away from herself. She's gonna move the arms. She's gonna deliberately try and make herself fall, but be able to recover from it. If you're not finding any problems with this, then we can start to make it harder again by limiting how much foot we're actually having to balance. So Jenny's just gonna stand on, she's gonna pick whatever foot she wants. She's only, only gonna put the ball of her foot on the plate. Now you can do this at home on your fireplace or on your um, bottom stair um, and you just want to start challenging yourself with limited amount of fit. So this is going to make your feet a lot stronger, it's going to make your ankles stronger and it's also quite a unique position that you don't really get to practice. What I love about this drill is the chaos. Jenny's not in control right now, she is having to deal with stuff and that is going to make her a lot stronger and it's going to make your joints feel a lot better too, okay? So some drills are just far too controlled and you're only going through one specific range of motion but the problem with um, like tendonitis is it's, it's generally happened because it's not being given that variety of movement that you can have. So you, you know, you've a lot more wiggle room than you think you do. So what I would like to see is that you build yourself up over time. So it doesn't matter, even if you can't even do this for two seconds, if you're having to keep on foot and putting the foot down, you just keep practicing until you're able to start to balance for maybe 10 seconds at a time. Long-term goal for a workout for this drill would be one minute in your left leg, one minute in your right leg, and one minute with both feet beside each other. So this is a great thing as well because you don't really get to practice your balance with both feet like this if you're just standing. So this starts to make balance harder with both legs having to work together at the same time. So really, really good drill. Woman on the left leg, woman on the right leg, woman on both legs, and for three full rounds. So it's a workout that will take you nine minutes. And like I said, if you're falling all over the place and need to keep resetting, that's fine. The only way to get benefits from it is to actually do it for an extended period of time. So it almost seems too easy. And a lot of people don't teach this because, you know, I can't specifically explain to you which exact muscle we're targeting because we're targeting them all. And in my opinion, that is more beneficial than anything. You're teaching your body how to work together as a whole, and that is going to make it feel stronger, which in turn will take away the 
reason for pain. So all of these drills that we've done in this video are going to be very, very easy for you to do um, at home. So make sure you get started on them as soon as you can and you're going to find that you're going to run into a lot less problems in your training and you're going to feel a lot stronger. So make sure you do them and let us know how it goes.